Hello there, welcome to this Carbon Academy tutorial on A-Level Biology. In this video we will look at the gas exchange system in fish and insects. So let's get started. Here are the aims of this tutorial. We'll describe the features of efficient gas exchange in organisms, describe how the structure of fish gills increase gas exchange, and explain how the counter current system functions, and then describe the gas exchange mechanisms in terrestrial insects, and finally explain how insects are adapted for maximal gas exchange. So why do we need gas exchange and what are the importance of exchange systems? Firstly, organisms need oxygen for respiration, which provides energy needed for survival. Moreover, carbon dioxide is toxic and damages our cells. Small organisms exchange gases by simple diffusion because they have a large surface area to volume ratio so they don't really need exchange systems. However, large organisms need exchange systems to meet their metabolic needs, as they have a small surface area to volume ratio. But what is surface area to volume ratio? Let's look at an example. Take the small blue cube and the large blue cube, measuring 1 cm and 10 cm in length respectively. The surface area of the 1 cm cube is 1 times 1 times 6, as cubes have 6 faces, no big surprise there, and this gives a value of 6 cm squared. The 10 cm cube has a surface area of 10 into 10 into 6, giving 600 cm squared. The volume of the 1 cm cube is 1 cm, while for the 10 cm cube is 1000 cm cubed. Therefore, the ratio of the surface area to volume is 6 to 1 and 600 to 1000 for the 1 cm cube and the 10 cm cube respectively. This means the surface area is 6 times greater than the volume for the 1 cm cube while it's only 60% in the 10 cm cube. Phew, too many cubes in one sentence, but this begs the question of how exchange systems need to adapt to maximize exchange. And this essentially relies on having a large surface area and a short diffusion pathway. Now, let's look at the gas exchange system in fish. Unlike terrestrial, aka land animals, fish have no lungs, they use gills. The gills are made of many gill filaments, which are the thin hair-like structures that you can see in the image. The filaments consist of lamellae, which cannot be seen to the naked eye. The word lamellae is derived from the Latin meaning thin. Both these structures increase the surface area of the gills, and since both of them are thin, they provide a short diffusion pathway. Additionally, many capillaries flow next to the lamellae as shown in this image. Because of this, a steep concentration gradient for oxygen diffusion can be maintained. But how do fish absorb oxygen from the water? This is answered by the countercurrent system. Counter means opposite, which makes sense because water and blood flow in the opposite direction. As I said previously, in the countercurrent system, water flows in the opposite direction to blood over the gill lamellae, as shown in the image. This means water can have high concentration of oxygen throughout the whole length of the lamella. This is evidenced by the diagram here. The number are arbitrary values, but you can appreciate that the values in blood are always smaller than water. So this means equilibrium is never reached. Ultimately, oxygen can diffuse across the whole length of the gill. Unlike fish, terrestrial organisms like insects lose water during gas exchange. This occurs because the water potential of outside air is lower than the water potential inside our body, so water diffuses out during breathing. Air reaches the respiring tissues of insects via spiracles, then through the trachea, and finally the tracheals. But remember, land animals need to reduce water loss or they would end up drying up like Spongebob and Patrick. So the way they do this is by controlling opening and closing of spiracles using abdominal contraction. Additionally, some insects may have sunken spiracles or hairs around spiracles which can reduce the water potential gradient and thereby limiting water loss. The mechanism of breathing in insects is as follows. During expiration, the insect's abdominal muscles contract, as shown here. Quite amazing, right? This increases the air pressure inside the trachea and decreases its volume. This is known as Boyle's Law, which states that volume and pressure are inversely proportional. 
Hence, air is forced out of the spiracles down a pressure gradient. During inspiration, abdominal muscles relax, so air pressure inside the trachea decreases. Hence, the spiracles open and air enters down a pressure gradient. But how do insects know when to open or close their spiracles? Well, this is mediated by the carbon dioxide threshold. Spiracles open when the carbon dioxide threshold is reached and therefore oxygen enters down a concentration gradient because there is low oxygen concentration in the respiring tissues. The spiracles close when the carbon dioxide concentration is below the threshold, and this also limits water loss. As shown in the image here, notice the increase in pressure of the tubes due to the abdominal pumping which expels carbon dioxide. So here's a recap of the aims of this tutorial. As usual, use them as questions to consolidate your learning, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.